with Mikey Vert. Man, it's kind of cold outside. The road to a big deadlift. My erectors have been erecting for four days straight. I've been so sore and I've been eating too much food and it's cold and I need a haircut. And now the negativity's out. Sometimes you just gotta let it out, drop kick it, and now onto the positive. We're getting stronger, although not where I wanna be. I'm tightening up my diet. We're gonna be in the middle shreds life, so then we can go shreds life in January. like deloading but it's the start of a new block so Joe does coach kind of similar to me where it's not just like a straight up like cut everything in half which is kind of an old school deload what we're going to do is start a new wave and when you start a new wave you just kind of start a little bit lighter so we got comp squat threes two sets of three and two sets of five I think so uh, nothing crazy but like four 50-ish, I think, for a triple, then a little drop down, then another drop down instead of five, and then just leg accessories. So I think we got Bulgarians, belt squat, and then I might catch upper body pump. I was feeling my own boobies the other day, and they're feeling a little soft, a little Pillsbury. And I think that's it. Then we got meetings all afternoon. It's time to jam, man. Big things happening February 4 and 5 here, Sacramento, California, Third Street Barbell uh, Classic. Uh, 210 lifters is going to be an absolute party, so we're going to start organizing some of that. More and more and more clothing launches. Now that the boys and the team's rocking and rolling here at the gym, it allows me to free up uh, to get a little bit more creative and give you guys a lot more apparel, tell the story a little bit better, uh, continue to, 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 to drive the, the, the culture and the community. That's the number one goal, man. Continue to drive and be driven by culture and community. So uh, let's get the squat workout on. People think that they gotta like do nothing to rest up for stuff. Sometimes some light movement helps. So like old school powerlifting, they would take their heaviest lifts like two weeks out and then do nothing but like bodybuild leading up to it. Which one, your motor pattern for the movement, you can actually detrain in that time. You're not gonna like get weaker, but you can detrain. In training, obviously we want a base level of fatigue while we still raise the intensities and allow ourselves to handle more weight. And we'll take away that fatigue and then hopefully that's like the super compensation of the taper. Take away the fatigue, you're handling heavier weights, so you can handle the heaviest weights out of meat. If you're in training or a meat, I would do everything the same. You know, eat the same, sleep the same. Hopefully, if you're taking yourself seriously, you're, you're tracking your food to some extent, your protein and your calories are consistent, your sleep's consistent, your warm-up's consistent. The same thing I would do today, which is like a light day. I would warm up, move around, think, eat, sleep, act the exact same way as if I had to PR today. And that's kind of the key to all this, is repetition, and handling lighter weights the same way you're gonna have it, handle heavy weights. I think if you program like perfectly, there's obviously gonna be waves. And I've said this in the past, I think like the term deload and all that's a little bit overrated because everyone thinks they get a little bit tired or the performance doesn't like skyrocket. They're like, I need a deload. I can't handle this much volume. And then they go and do 10 sets of 10. And then the next week they're wondering why they're not progressing. We're like, just like progress is kind of irregular. I kind of program that way with like these I think about it as like a paintbrush. If you all want to get a little nerdy, you guys ever do some water painting? And you paint one, it's kind of see-through. So then I'll paint like a little bit more in another wave and it gets a little darker. And you just like fade it into itself until we kind of taper into what we're doing. And Joe hasn't given me the master plan, but he gives me an idea what's going on. And I think that's kind of how he works too. So yeah, like today was last week, this very day was a 470 pod squat for three, which is quite heavy. Today it's more just triples, comp squat. And then the, you know, so it is like different, but it's not crazy different. I was at 470, now I'm gonna be at like 430, 440, right? So it's not like we just cut it in half and cut the volume in half. Volume's around the same, and it's just a different exercise. Yeah, all out singles, probably comp style. I think, I think the top pause is off the top of my head, but I think the pause, the heavy day deadlift, it's a pause single and then regular down sets. And the other deadlift day is like six by two at like 480 or something kind of heavy so you know it's just slowly that kind of ramp up up down up down up down I don't know if that made sense but um, yeah I mean most coaches know how to manipulate fatigue and that's all we're doing we're manip manipulating how, how we handle fatigue when to rest when when you need to train under fatigue uh, and then when you need to be ready to perform your best because that's the sport of powerlifting how do you represent your strength perfectly in nine attempts on a singular day 
That's the sport. Um, I know that makes it sound less cool and sexy than, no, I just want to get strong and lift heavy weight. But that's literally the sport. Representing your best strength in nine attempts on a singular day. And so when you program, you're trying to set it up for that. It's all a little bit backwards, you know? Even people's thinking's a little bit backwards, where people typically think that a top single fatigues you more, but it actually doesn't. Both CNS and, as long as you're not grinding your tits off, more reps towards failure will get you there. So three, three by 10 RPE nine will tire you out way more than a one by, one by three or a three by one at nine. Um, but in terms of accessories, I mean, that's the big difference is we're slowly trying to build muscle here without negatively affecting our performance. So we'll do, you know, a lot of times RPE 7s and 8s on our stuff, where if I'm bodybuilding, the load doesn't matter. So you can go RPE 8, 9, 10 on this because you're literally just trying to get stronger uh, slowly over time, but it doesn't matter as much. You just want the stimulus to build the muscle. If this, if I do this, and for some reason next week, I can only do two plates, but I go to a true RPE 9 both times, you can still build muscle. Right? Um, in powerlifting, you're worried more about the systemic stress, what's happening in the systemic fatigue of your whole body. Where here, you're looking, bodybuilding, you're looking more in like cent uh, centralized fatigue or like per muscle group fatigue. I know I promised Twitch streams, they are coming. Twitch.tv slash Silent Mike with two Ks. Be sure to follow, come hang out. New videos every Monday, Thursday. Appreciate you guys so, so much. The channel's alive and kicking. We're getting to 160,000 subscribers, which I think is an all time PR. I think before CBS come on, my height was 159, and we're creeping to that. So, road to 160K. Fuck it, road to 200K. Never been there close. Let's hit it. Tell your friends, share this video out. Enjoy the journey with us, man culture and community, we over me, be a part of something bigger than yourself, something like I'm out.